السلام عليكم Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Tahir al Haj Yusuf, uh, Strategic Development Director at Remini Street, Middle East and Africa. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you for joining today's session. Um, I come with my team. They are residing there. <laughs> okay, well, uh, today we will be talking to you about the um, evolution of ERP. ROI-based decisions and how things are when it comes to the ERP industry. Uh, briefly about our company, Remini Street is the global leader in providing third-party support services for enterprise applications. And I'm referring to enterprise applications like Oracle, SAP, IBM, Microsoft, and so on. And what we do by third-party support, we basically replace the vendor support. The annual support to pay the vendor, the 22% to pay the vendor for their upgrade, up, update, and break and fix. We do replace that at 50% of their fee, and we provide a much larger support services in terms of service level agreement, in terms of the quality of the engineers, response time, resolution, and so on. Um, we started in 2005. We are a public listed company uh, based in Las Vegas. Um, uh, we are a public listed company. We have nearly 2,000 employees. Half of that are support engineers. Uh, we service so far more than 5,000 enterprise customers in more than 150 countries, including uh, Saudi Arabia, the Gulf region, and uh, among of which 180 are Fortune 500 uh, customer for us. The client satisfaction rate is 4.9 out of 5. And what we mean by that, when you raise a ticket with Remini Street, um, and we will respond to them. Uh, then once we make the resolution, we we'll send you a survey card. We'll ask you to rate our performance in a, uh, on, a, on a rate of one to five. Global average for 2022 was 4.9 out of five. It's important to highlight that the global average for many services companies, uh, as per Gartner, is roughly around 2.7 out of five. Uh, we provide support services for Okay. Okay. Obviously, we cover many industries. 27%, 28% of the global client base are manufacturing. We are talking about a similar percentage for telecom, technology, media, as well as we, we, we've, uh, we service many other sectors when it comes to nuclear agencies, to, to military, uh, defense, and so on. So we are not talking about only the enterprise or the commercial customer, we talk about high sensitive uh, uh, mission critical industries. Um, since inception, we've grown as an organization. Um, in addition to our core business for providing third party level four support, uh, over the years we expanded, we provide many services. Uh, um, we provide security solutions to help organization to deal with the cyber security and all of that at the enterprise level, uh, as well as we provide interoperability integration, which will enable you to uh, solidify your applications and sustain them for a long period of time. And last but not least, we provide professional services and so on. So ultimately, we are designed to help organization align their IT spending in a matter that support their business strategy, their growth, and, and hence enable them to, to invest in the right technology that will enable them to attain that competitive advantage as well as be able to grow as an organization. My job as a, the, as a strategy development director is to travel around, uh, attend conferences, try to learn as much as I can about ERP trend, uh, what are the changes in the industry and how things are becoming, uh, how things are evolving down the road. Now, from what we've learned so far, basically the world is becoming unpredictable and which is putting a lot of pressure on an organization in terms of their capacity to maneuver and be able to predict what is gonna happen a few months from now. So that unpredictability is putting a lot of pressure on organizations globally, as well as 
um, organization need to attain profitability and grow at the same time with all the challenges and the unpredictability they need to improve profitability as well as grow and last but not least they need to deal with vendors pressures to go for example to the cloud uh, invest heavily to go to the cloud abandon their per perpetual license and 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 follow us a, a certain vendor dictated roadmap into the future at the same time organization needs to be agile they need to be flexible fast has the capacity to be able to react quickly and and be able to take decisions quickly and thus be able to safeguard the organization future and the capacity to compete uh, uh, in, in those difficult times at the same time organizations need to invest uh, in, in to improve all the different aspects pertaining to things like customer experience cyber security and so on so with the challenge of uh, gaining profitability and the challenge of uh, being able to grow, you also need to invest to attain that competitive advantage and be able to invest in the right technology to help you as an organization to grow and, 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 and attain that competitive advantage. And last but not least, organization needs to leverage their current systems as much as they can to improve the ROI and be able to uh, minimize those risky moves and new ventures and new initiatives that may jeopardize the organization capacity to to be able to attain any of these uh, any of these uh, missions in terms of being agile in terms of uh, in terms of attaining profitability and growth so obviously the industry is becoming challenging for for organizations and and add to that uh, with with all of the things that deal with the geopolitical challenges uh, in terms of war, conflicts, uh, a pandemic, there are environment, environmental challenges. Add to that also there is the techno technology challenges in terms of cyber security. You have to go and invest in things like artificial intelligence and so on. And in, uh, on top of that, you have to deal with financial uncertainties, inflations. Uh, we are working with, with one of some of the uh, most powerful telecom company in South Africa now. Uh, in, in 2019, they were profitable, very profitable. In 2022, they are on the verge of being uh, 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 acquired by another company because they had to deal with 65%, 70% inflation year on year. They had to deal with all of the different challenges that they were not, uh, they did not anticipate or predicted uh, two to three years from, uh, from now or two to three years uh, ago. So what they are going to do uh, with all these enterprise applications in terms of, we see certain items missing in terms of SAP, Oracle, Salesforce, Microsoft, IBM, and all those do open source databases. Now, organization has two different directions. One, which is the, called the vendor dictated roadmap. And the vendor dictated roadmap, basically, you need to adhere to the vendor dictated roadmap in terms of um, you need to continue to update, you need to continue to upgrade, and you need to uh, continue to, to invest with the vendor to be able to maintain support, as well as you need to, um, you need to, should you, should you uh, uh, if you are on premise, now the vendors are asking you to go to the cloud to maintain support, as well as you need to be dependent on the vendor, and most importantly, you can access only the new functions that you would require once the vendor have them ready. On the other side, the second option, organization are going through a different approach where they will go and uh, uh, base their decision on total cost of ownership, in terms of aligning their IT uh, needs in a matter that support the business needs. They will go in terms of different vendors, different technology, see which one is most suitable to them and align that, that piece of technology without having to, without having to uh, uh, upset the overall uh, uh, landscape that they've been building for years. And most importantly, all their decisions are based on ROI, the, the, the return on investment and total cost of uh, ownership. 
Uh, this is what Remin Street does. We work with organizations to help them to follow a, a business-driven roadmap that will, will, will support them, that will prepare them to be more agile, faster to maneuver, as well as to focus in, with, uh, with their IT strategy solely on their business needs. Now, this is what uh, uh, Gartner talks about, okay, we have, the, the slides are not functioning correctly. Basically, Gartner says that two years, three years ago, they came out with the, with the composable ERP strategy or the composable um, uh, business strategy, which is made of three items. Number one, the composable business architect, and they are saying that organization needs to build their, their business architect and the, and, and the emphasis of business based on a modular basis that will allow them to maneuver. And if one of these modules or one of these department or section or divisions are not, are not performing well, you will be able to change it or get rid of it or close it without impacting the overall organization. The same thing apply on the technology. You will be able to access all the different technologies, all the different vendors that you will, you, in the market and the, the large selection, and based on that, you will take the technology that you would require without having to impact the overall uh, landscape. And last but not least, composable vendors, which means you are not limiting yourself to a single vendor. And therefore, there are tens of vendors, hundreds of vendors globally. Selection is big. You will be able to attain the need you would require without impacting the overall uh, ERP last game that you have. Basically, the, how we bring that, how we uh, um, reflect that on ERP, generally organization looks uh, to, an ERP, uh, to an ERP as a whole piece made of mo mo different modules. But the composable strategy is basically saying you do not look at them at different modules, but you look at them at, at, at different blocks of your ERP uh, system. Each block can behave differently, and, and should you require to remove a certain block, you will be able to do that and go and put a new block, maybe from a different vendor to attain that need that would you acquire without having to, without having to uh, change or impact your entire ERP landscape. And this is, this is very important because, because if we look at 30 years ago, organization did not have much uh, uh, selection. They had to go and speak to different vendors, whether for the hardware, they go for the ERP and database, a separate vendor. They go for the database and management services, large integrators, as well as, well as application, application managed services, you go to a different integrator. And all of that based on, on, the, on the, the limited selection we had 30 years ago. Now things are changing. Uh, vendors are uh, are trying to over offer the whole stack, and and from offering the whole stack, they are trying to lock you basically into a single vendor. Uh, they will try to lock you in, in terms of uh, a cloud SaaS uh, subscription uh, on a let's say four to five years contract. And, and hence, you will be taking the whole thing from them. Now, one flag has been raised by Gartner and, and by companies like Remini Street that should you go and require one day to be able to go change, change of any of these pieces, you are required to for the whole landscape or the agreement for, uh, with that vendor to basically collapse, okay? And, and, uh, the composable ERP, what we are trying to do now and what we are trying to offer is that we, as, as which agree, is supported by Gartner, is that you go and you work yourself base, uh, basically and extend yourself the flexibility and the ability to maneuver with all those vendors and pick the right vendor that you would need that, that provide you the, the service you would require okay, in a matter that supports your ROI and total cost of ownership. So you will be able, rather than go to a single vendor and rely on them for the infrastructure, you have a number of selection 
The same thing for database and software, you have different selections, as well as for support, database management and application services, you have all the different selections. Obviously, Remini Street sits on the support side, specialized support side, and, and one of the things that we always preach for is that the, most of the core of the ERP is a back office, financial distribution and so on. The, 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 there is no need to do a lot of changes in these. In, in countries like Japan, they maintain this uh, landscape for almost 20, 25 years without change. And though all of their investment is, is on the composable side, where they invest on the sides and bring all those new technologies and just plug them to where they are. So basically, this is, this is a composable strategy. Um, now, in terms of taking the decision on, on a composable uh, 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 strategy and uh, whether you'll be able to do that compos composable strategy or not, it's a very basic equation. Basically, if you have a need, let's say business intelligence, you will go and number one, you will ask, will your system, current system, be able to provide you that need, uh, whether through integration, whether through customization and so on. And if yes, you'll be able to go and attain that need and you start with it. Now, if no, you will be able to go and go to the market, check which companies that will be able to provide you that business intelligent need, the analytics, and, and you would acquire it from them, okay, based on ROI, based on total cost initiative, and what, what is the best thing for your organization, rather than wait for the vendor to provide that, provide that, that uh, function or put their demand to be able to upgrade to that function. Because for example, if you have an ERP from one of those vendors and you would like to have that BI functionality, the least thing they will tell you, you are, on, you are not on the latest version, please first upgrade, then you will be able to access that functionality. So the, 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 this is not, that if the vendor cannot supply you, or, or dictate certain conditions to supply you this functionality, uh, this is not the end of the world. You still have a lot of room, room to maneuver and attain what you need. This is basically a, a, an example for an SAP customer, a medium-sized SAP customer. They are using uh, material management, financial sales and distribution and production planning decided to want to attain customer relationship management. They don't have it. They wanted also HR as well as warehouse management. They contacted SAP. They told them this is what we need. SAP told them you need to, uh, for you to attain these new modules, you need to go subscribe with RISE. Your ECC6, you need to leave it and go to RISE which was most, mostly as for HANA, you go to RISE, then you migrate your four core modules, the financials, materials, management, sales, distribution, and production. You migrate them to RISE, then you'll be able to attain those three additional modules. With simple calculation, they found out that, that the whole cost of this venture will cost them with SAP roughly $13 million. Um, and their total cost of ownership, basically the return on investment, roughly 200%. We came and we look at this customer. Uh, we investigated their needs in terms of HR, CRM, and warehouse. And we came out saying, listen, your CRM can be taken care of Salesforce. Your HR can be taken care of um, Workday and your uh, your uh, warehouse management can be attained via via Manhattan, which is which is a, a holy cloud solution uh, for warehouse management. We redone the calculation for them, and we, we the whole cost of ownership and moving to that composable ERP strategy that we provided them was roughly five million dollars, and return on investment roughly six hundred percent. So ultimately, uh, ultimately. Uh, um, the, the, the total cost of ownership, a lot of organization is motivated by going to the technology and try to adapt that technology to their needs. Composable ERP is telling you to expand the horizon and consider things differently. This is basically the play between chess and checkers. Composable ERP is asking you, encourages you to be able to look at multi-year 
project business enablement will encourage you to base all your decision on ROI, will encourage you to analyze year-on-year -year net benefit analysis, and most importantly, will encourage you to maximize the investment you've done so far and, and make sure that you, you, you expand on the ROI. In terms of the checkers, which is a lot of the organization, what they do, they are focused a lot on the transaction itself. They squeeze the vendor, okay, don't worry about that work. They will try to squeeze Oracle to get the best price, but most importantly, probably it's not your right decision for you to go with the vendor. Cost-based decisions, and basically this is where it says you may invest $10, but the ROI is zero, yet you may invest $100,000, and the ROI is beautiful. So essentially, a composable ERP encourages organization to go outside the box and try to attain what they require, exactly what they require in the, the most suitable way for them and their businesses. Okay, that's it. Um, I try to be as brief as possible. Uh, do you have any question? We are good? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.